Thank you. Engineering principles are, is uh, commonly applied to improve joint functions and improve osteoarthritis. Do you know any similarities between the human body and engineering design? Can you think of something? Let's see the bone, for example, any long bone in the body, and a tube, and a hollow tube that's commonly used in frames, such as bicycle frame. They're both long, then they are both uh, strong on the outside and hollow in the inside. It makes them both able to have the strength that they need uh, to perform the, per the function that they need with minimum weight. In fact, uh, nature has uh, taught us lots of um, engineering principles, so has inspired lots of important engineering designs. As such, uh, engineering principles are applied to improve quality of life. As we age, our clinical needs increase, and the population in the world is aging across the world. In the past, uh, grandma used to be happy to sit in the rocking chair and uh, chill out watching the flowers grow to pass the time. Nowadays, the expectations of seniors are completely different. They want to stay active and fit for longer. They want to skydive, rock climb. They want to uh, bicycle. They want to play tennis, run, ski, swim. They want to rock and roll. However, this is not the case for a good proportion of seniors who need an um, uh, assistive device to move around. As um, nearly one out of six men and one out of four women above the age of 45 across the world show signs of osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is a degenerative disease of the knee joint, of any joint in the body. And it is, once you have it, it doesn't get better. And there's no cure for it, it just gets worse. It is actually the largest cause of disability in the US and the fifth largest cause of disability in the world. It is linked with um, loss of mobility and associated pathologies such as cardiovascular disease, diabetes. As such, osteoarthritis uh, is uh, uh, responsible for 1% of death worldwide. Countries such as Australia, the US, European countries spend as much as 1% to 2.5% of their gross domestic product on um, treating osteoarthritis. For this reason, engineers are working um, together with clinicians to improve the uh, quality of life of people suffering from this terrible disease of, of osteoarthritis. My name is Raj Shri Hillstrom. I, uh, I'm a medical, um, I am a reader in medical engineering. I direct the medical engineering research group at Anglia Ruskin University. For the last 20 years, I've been working together with clinicians, engineers, scientists in different uh, institutions across the world to help bring uh, and, uh, solutions to help treatments with uh, connected to osteoarthritis. Let's see what happens behind the scene uh, of medical engineering in this respect. First, it is important to understand how uh, osteoarthritis affects the joint. Let's look at... Um, the knee joint, for example, someone who has got a malaligned knee, uh, malalignment will result in increased stress, uh, increased pressure inside the knee joint. This increased pressure will uh, cause damage to the tissue without the, within the joint. As a result, we can see on the X-ray image the joint space narrowing. This joint space narrowing causes damage to the cartilage, uh, tear in the cartilage, and uh, Osteoarthritis, as I said, is a degenerative disease. It doesn't repair. So with time, you can see on the picture in the far right, uh, this is an arthroscopy picture inside the knee. Uh, so you can see the white uh, uh, coating on, on top is, uh, is, out, is cartilage that is worn out, exposes the bone. When bone rubs on bone, it creates, um, it, this uh, results in um, loss of pain and loss of mobility. There are lots of treatments for the early stage of osteoarthritis and end stage of osteoarthritis. However, there's limited treatment to moderate osteoarthritis. And most people suffering from osteoarthritis are in this category of moderate. Uh, so they are in this desert with limited treat treatment options. Osteoarthritis can result as a number of factors. This includes obesity, uh, aging, 
trauma, and especially malalignment. Irrespective of all these uh, factors, osteoarthritis occurs because of high excessive pressure in the joint. Now, if we want to treat osteoarthritis, it is important for us to know how much pressure acts on the knee joint. So let's see how we can do this. This is emotion, uh, in the Emotion Analysis Laboratory. We can measure precisely and objectively the motion of uh, the movement of uh, the body during different functional activities. We can also measure the joint loading, for example, during walking, running, and uh, other uh, important activities. Uh, we use uh, reflective markers uh, that, and uh, optical cameras to measure motion objectively. And to measure joint loading, we use force plates. As you can see in the second diagram, the blue arrow shows the magnitude and direction of pressure in the uh, magnitude of, uh, of um, the direction of ground reaction force at every instance of walking, as measured by the force plate. Now, if we calculate in, by inverse dynamics, we can uh, estimate the joint load of the ankle, knee, and hip at every uh, point in the walking cycle, as shown in the uh, graphs on the right. If we place sensors on uh, top of the skin, uh, we can also measure muscle activity during different activities. However, although we can measure pressure, uh, forces in the joint, we cannot measure pressure in, in a non-invasive manner. So how can we treat uh, osteoarthritis if we can't uh, measure the joint pressure? Computer simulation has been used in the past, uh, is being used uh, to design um, aeroplanes, uh, buildings, bridges. And um, let's see how such uh, simulation can be used in the human body to uh, predict uh, pressure that acts in the joint. First, we need to have a high resolution radiological image. Using special techniques, we can segment each tissue within the knee joint to obtain a very accurate geometry representation of every tissue, for example, the cartilage, the bone, the ligaments. Now, these, uh, uh, these uh, different tissues have got very complex structures. So to reduce, to uh, simplify the mathematics involved, we break down these complex structures into uh, regular hexagonal and trihedral elements for each of these um, tissues. Then we simulate interaction among these tissues. For example, how uh, cartilage is attached to bones. You remember how we measured motion and movement and uh, loading in the joints in the laboratory. We use these biomechanical data to run the models and predict knee joint and predict uh, pressure inside the knee joint. To validate the, the computational model, we, pre we compare the pressure predicted by the computational model with those that can be measured, as shown in the far right, using sensors placed inside the knee, uh, using equipment such as a joint simulator that can simulate uh, loading, uh, joint loading in a, in a physiological manner. This can also be done by using a six degree of freedom robot. So now that the um, model of the knee is, uh, uh, is uh, validated, we can use it to compare the uh, joint pressure before and after different treatments. Let's look at some example. The knee on the left is malaligned, and this causes increased pressure in the joint, which could damage the tissues. The surgeons can very accurately correct this malalignment using very specialized equipment. However, if we cannot measure the pressure, it is difficult to target the alignment correction that will lead um, to, that will inform us of a minimum pressure in the joint. Can the model be used to predict what alignment is required to uh, achieve minimum pressure in the joint? Yes, we can. The uh, color map shows pressure distribution on the knee cartilage on, the shin, on one shin bone view from above. So, the red color shows areas of high stress and blue, low stress. The red and blue line shows the peak stress values at different alignment of the, of the knee. 
uh, in the medial and lateral component, uh, respectively. As such, the knock knee on the, right, on the left shows high pressure in the lateral compartment, and the bow leg knee on the right shows high stress in the medial compartment. So, if a surgeon wants to achieve minimum uh, pressure in both the medial and lateral compartment of the knee, they can use this graph and look at the corresponding angle of alignment, which they can target to achieve minimum pressure. Let's see how uh, realignment surgical uh, surgery can, can reduce uh, joint loading. Scientists at the Hospital for Special Surgery uh, uh, investigated the biomedical data of six of four patients who had uh, received uh, realignment surgery at the hospital. So that's a total of eight limbs. The result shown in the graph shows a reduction in uh, joint movement after surgery, as shown by the dotted line, compared to the uh, uh, solid line before surgery. Um, similarly, the area under the graph shows uh, that the knee moment impulse is reduced after surgery. Now, this corresponds to a redu reduction in knee stress, in, uh, in pressure in the knee joint, which is good. Another example is um, the Atlas internal unloading uh, implant, which has been designed to offload the knee joint without, uh, unlike other joint replacement, this uh, implant does not violate any joint tissues. It is placed under the skin and fixed to the bone, and uh, as such, the tissues are not damaged. We use, our mo we use the uh, computational model to see how this implant can reduce pressure inside the knee. The pressure distribution on the right shows reduced area of gray and red corresponding to high, uh, to high pressure. Uh, this shows that uh, the joint, uh, this internal implant can reduce pressure inside the knee joint. We also use this model to look at the optimal placement of the implant for improved performance. Can one single uh, surgical treatment uh, be suitable for every patient? Let's look at uh, a total hip replacement, for example. During a cemented total hip replacement, surgeons would uh, drill and encourage holes inside the hip socket and um, uh, use bone cement to anchor the cup, the implant cup, inside the, uh, inside the hip. Now, different surgeons would use different surgical techniques to do this. Some would use, uh, they would use different, for example, different number of anchorage holes. To um, evaluate the performance of, different, of these different surgical techniques, we looked at, um, we created a, a computational model of the reconstructed hip joint. Our results at the bottom left shows that the hip implant, which is um, uh, fixed with six smaller anchorage holes, shows higher stress in red uh, in the cement mantle compared to one with three large anchorage holes. So what does that mean? It is uh, most likely that the uh, implant uh, that is fixed with three large anchorage holes is, will last longer. The same uh, model was used, uh, showed that People with different bone sensitivities and different bone uh, geometries will need different uh, thickness of cement mantle. Surface uh, design of implants together with synovial fluid can reduce wear rate in total joint replacement. This is a technique borrowed from uh, the automobile uh, internal combustion engine. We conducted a dynamic test on uh, these implants with different, uh, with different designs of surfaces, some with smooth surface and some with uh, textured surface with different uh, shapes and sizes of dimples in nanometer scale. Our results show that uh, the surfaces with uh, the textured surface uh, has a better tribology performance and uh, show uh, lower wear rate. This shows how engineering can be um, applied to improve uh, the performance of medical devices. So our take home message, medical engineering can uh, reduce uh, the um, gap between expect expectation of seniors and uh, the reality of life. Osteoarthritis uh, progression 
uh, is caused by uh, increased uh, uh, stress in the knee joints, in the joints, because this stress causes damage to the tissue within the joint. Engineering uh, techniques have been used to study uh, patients, uh, cadavers, and um, uh, simulations to see how we can reduce stress in the joints. Coupled with clinical information, uh, these medical engineers can help uh, inform how, uh, how uh, treatments work and uh, to provide uh, suggestions for novel and new treatments uh, to uh, look at osteoarthritis. Ladies and gentlemen, surgical planning tools for personalized treatment is around the corner. Thank you.